every horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. G-Man Jimmy is eight years old. He is strong and he is bold. He can capture outlaws cause he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 That's Cheerios, all right. The nourishing oat cereal that's shaped like little letter O's. The ready-to-eat cereal with a wonderful toasted oat flavor. What's more, every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. That's right, each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. And these good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones, and muscles. Yes, Cheerios is made to give you real go power. So try Cheerios, the famous oat cereal that needs no cooking. And soon you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? Away! The Lone Ranger and Toto stopped to water their horses at the narrow stream that ran along the ridge where they had been riding. Toto. Me here, Kimotabi. Bring me my field glasses, will you please? Ah. Here, Kimotabi. Here, glasses. Oh, thanks, Toto. You see something? Yes, yeah, some men, Toto. Down there by Devil's Rock. Ah, me see three men. I recognize one of them. Amos Stockton, the lawyer. Uh, him not good. He's never been honest, Toto. We know that. Why should he meet with those other two out here? Who are they? The younger of the two men was Rex Bacon. The other was Pete Roswell, half-owner of the R. Cross T. Ranch. I don't know what's got into that old galoot, Ed Thomas. When I bought half interest in his ranch, I paid him more than it was worth. You'd think he'd be glad to sell me the other half. Uh, hey, uh, Mr. Stockton, when Pete bought his interest, uh, it was your money he used. Why'd you let him pay old man Thomas so much? Because I wanted Thomas to sell without quibbling. Uh, but now he won't sell me the other half. Stockton... You think he knows about them oil prospectors being ready to pay all kinds of money for the property? No, I don't. I'm the only one who knows about them. We know, Mr. Stockton. Pete and I. Yes, you do, Rex. But don't let it put any ideas in your heads. Let's get this matter of Ed Thomas settled. Yes, Stockton. Just what do you want me and Rex to do? There's the will Ed Thomas must sign. I've made it out. It leaves his half of the ranch to you when he dies. See that he signs it today. Huh? What good will it do if I get him to sign it? The oil people are going to buy the property next week. You'll own the ranch by then because Ed Thomas will be dead. Oh. You and Rex are going to kill him. Oh, yeah? Now, when? This evening. Now, Pete, here's what I want you to do, huh? When you get back to the ranch, hide Thomas's eyeglasses. 
Take this will and tell him it's an agreement to purchase some new stock for the ranch. Tell him it's a bargain. As the men talked, the Lone Ranger removed his field glasses from his eyes and spoke to Tonto. It's strange, those men meeting down there. Tonto, we'll camp south of here at the bend. We'll remain a few days. We'll try to protect the people in this territory for the good of the West. At sunset, the masked man and the Indian met once more at their campsite. Tonto had followed Roswell into town, where the latter had gone to the sheriff's office. The Lone Ranger had trailed the other two men to a nearby ranch. They went to the old Ed Thomas ranch house. The ranch has gone to ruin since we saw it last year, Tonto. We must learn what happened to it and why those men are there. Ed Thomas hobbled to a chair placed his cane on the table and peered at the paper which Roswell had been insisting that he sign all afternoon. Pete, I tell you, I can't read it. And I won't sign what I can't read. Where's my glasses? Ed, will you stop the fussing? This paper just says we get 200 head of beef from the Grand Circle Ranch at a price... Yeah, yeah, you told me all that before. We both have to sign this paper to make it legal. I'm your partner. Now, here... I'll sign my name on this line. Pete Roswell wrote his name, then led Ed Thomas's protesting hand to the paper. Finally, the old man signed. Shortly after, he was seated on the front seat of a buckboard, heading for town. Rex Bacon had supposedly remained behind while Roswell drove. Come on, get Pete, along there. Where are you going? I don't see well, but I know this isn't the road to town. We're up on the ridge road, aren't we? I'm taking the long way because... Ho, oh, oh, there, ho. Oh. What in thunder? Why are you stopping like that, Pete? Ed, there's a man riding out of the bushes with a gun. He's masked. Ed, it's a holdout. Ho, oh, oh, there, ho, oh, ho, oh, there. Get your hands up, the two of you. What the hell? Oh, ho, oh, oh, stop that. Crazy horse! Hey, jump, Pete, jump! The carriage is going over the ridge! Pete, help me! Stop Shoot him, Rex! Shoot him! Pete Roswell fire. jumped to the ground, yelling at Rex Bacon to fire. But as the mounted man did, the buckboard turned over. Then as Ed Thomas pawed frantically at the air, the vehicle plunged over the side of the ridge. Oh, that fool horse. The way he reared and backed up. I jumped off that buckboard just in time. Yes, you almost went with it. You see down there? Yeah. Look, that wagon's busted all to pieces. And the horse. Yeah. Yeah, I see it. Dead, that's sure. Yeah, and uh, Thomas must be too. See? He's not moving. So, what do you say? Ready to take care of me now? Uh, yeah. You mean I'm still supposed to shoot you? Sure, we got to make this look good, the way Stockton said. Yeah, I suppose, but I... But I... nothing. All right. We'll not take off this bandana. Now, uh, where do you want me to shoot you? Well, top of the left shoulder, that's the best spot. Only be sure you make it high. Uh, stand in the moonlight so I can see you. Oh, wait, I'll empty my gun first. It's got to look like I was firing at those bandits, too. Trying to protect poor old Ed Thomas. <laughs> Go ahead, then. Uh, how many bullets you got left in your gun? I fired four at Thomas. There's two left. Well, only use one on me. Well, here goes. Camp less than a quarter of a mile away, the Lone Ranger and Tonto heard the shots to the north on the ridge road. Easy, steady, big fella. Easy. Ride fast, Toto. Sounds like trouble. Come on, Hillary. Come on, Scout. Come on, Scout. Rex Bacon waited almost a minute before he took aim at Pete Roswell's left shoulder. Don't move, Pete. Now get ready. Now. Did I get you in the right spot, Pete? Yeah, yeah. Bandage me quick, huh? Then ride to town and get the sheriff and the doctor out yeah, here. Yeah, sure. Let me tell you, sure. Hey, right, wait. 
You hear that? Horses coming this way. Someone heard the shots. They'll think you did the shooting if they see. Why should they? Why should oh, they? Wait, wait. We'll make this real good. Give me your gun, quick. Huh? You'll need an alibi, too. Give me your gun. You've got one shot left, quick. Yeah. I'll get your shoulder, too. Baby, this is crazy. No, it's not. No. Not if we... Now, lay back, Rex. I see him coming against the moon. There's two of them. Pete Roswell threw aside the second empty pistol and laid beside Rex Bacon, both of them grabbing at their superficial wounds. A lone ranger and Tottle leaped from their horses and ran to where the men lay on the ground. What happened to you? Who shot you? Bandits shot us. Got away. Look at Oh, Let me see. That's not too bad, only a shoulder wound. How's that man, Toto? Him not hurt much. Look after these men, Toto. Bandage them. I'm going after the bandits who held them up. Mister, which way did they go? They went north. North. Easy, said it before. Monster! As the Lone Ranger galloped off towards the north, Toto tore cloth from Rex Bacon's shirt and began to treat the man's wounded shoulder. He didn't notice Pete Roswell behind him. Roswell had risen to his knees and grabbed the discarded revolver. Now he leaped to his feet and, using his right hand, brought the gun crashing down on Toto's skull. No! Pete, you knocked the engine out. What'd you do that for? Get up, Rex, and forget about that shoulder of yours. We're in the clear for sure now. We're taking this redskin to the sheriff ourselves. Huh? Oh, oh that shoulder hurts. So does mine. Forget oh. about it and listen to me. Our story now is the masked man and this engine held us up, killed Ed Thomas, and shot us. The masked man escaped, but we got the engine. Uh, we're turning him over to the law. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Well, all over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question. And here's what the happy, happy people have to say. Eating our Wheaties and do, do, do an okay. Okay. Right. That's something champions know everywhere, wherever you go. Take Parbust and Sammy Sneed. Born in old Virginia, Slammin' Sam has been up on top for years and eaten his Wheaties regularly. And Al Rosen, born in sunny South Carolina, clutch hitter with the Cleveland Indians. There's Al at the plate. Here's a pitch. Another solid sock for a solid champ. And say Al Rosen's been eating Wheaties for 23 baseball seasons. That's the way it goes. South, North, East, West, Wheaties. Why, there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Keep on eating your Wheaties and you'll be do 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 and okay. Okay. Now to continue. Amos Stockton had planned to be in Sheriff Tom Niles' office that evening when Rex Bacon would make his appearance. He went there and pretended to seek certain involved information. Sheriff Niles was attempting to supply it when the door to his office burst open. Stockton was surprised to see Pete Roswell with Bacon, but he was more surprised when he saw that both their shirts were bloodstained and that they were holding an unconscious Indian between them. Sheriff Niles rushed forward to relieve them of their burden. Here, let me take him. What happened? Sheriff, the Indian's a bandit. He and a masked man held us up on the ridge. Yeah, they, they killed Ed Thomas. Huh? Ed Thomas, my friend? Oh, no. Sheriff, we got to tell you what happened so you can go after that masked hombre and catch well, him. Tell me after I fix this Indian and get you over to Doc Briggs. The Lone Ranger had ridden miles in pursuit of non-existent bandits. When after a while he saw no sign or trail of the phantom men, he galloped back to the spot where he'd left Toto treating the wound at Roswell and Rex Bacon. But he found this place deserted. Oh, oh easy, steady big fella. Well, that's odd. Easy. The masked man dismounted, prepared to study the ground now bathed in moonlight. Then he heard a voice cry faintly from below. He ran to the edge of the road, peered downward, then turned and hurried back to Silver. Easy, big fella. Someone needs help down there. Get up there. 
Amos Stockton was riding with a posse that set out for the scene of the holdup and Ed Thomas's supposed death. He was riding next to Sheriff Niles and Deputy Dad Phillips when Phillips suddenly pulled the reins on his horse. Oh, 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 oh. Tom, look, coming up from the ridge. Hey, it's a masked man. The bandit that killed Ed Thomas. He's carrying something or someone on his horse. Come on, men, get your guns ready. Get up, get up. Get up. Niles was in front of the posse when he saw who it was the Lone Ranger bore on his horse. Oh, hold it, hold it, hold it. Hey, Dad, that's Ed Thomas he's carrying. So gone it is. Hold your fire, boys. He's got Ed Thomas. Hold it. It's a masked man with Ed. Stockton, don't use that gun. Thomas is alive. Hold it, Stockton. I'll kill him. I'll kill that man. Stockton, give me that gun. You're crazy, Sheriff. The man's a killer. Let go of my arm. You almost shot Thomas, you fool. Now give me that gun. The law will handle this. Stranger, what is this? We've been looking for you. Never mind me. Take Ed Thomas and get him to a doctor, will you please, Sheriff? He's in bad shape. Members of the posse carried Ed Thomas and placed him carefully on a horse. As they started to take him to town, the sheriff turned to the Lone Ranger. Right in front of me, stranger. You're a cool one. I don't know what this means, you carrying Ed Thomas up from that gully. But you're under arrest. We got your engine partner in jail already. What for? I don't understand. Hey, Sheriff, we ought to string up this man. For the last time, Stockton, keep out of this. All right, stranger, no tricks. Under the circumstances, I'll be glad to go with you, Sheriff. Very glad. Get him Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Back in town at his office, Sheriff Tom Niles questioned the Lone Ranger and ended by admitting he was puzzled. Yeah, you're right, stranger. No hold-up man I ever met has come back to take his victim to a doctor like you started to do with Ed Thomas. I've been thinking the same thing, Tom. Sheriff, here's a silver bullet I carry. Look at it. I see it. Perhaps if you stop and think, you'll find some significance in that bullet. This mask I wear and the white horse I ride. Doggone, Tom, that's it. The mask and all the rest. The engine said his name was Tonto, too. Now that means... I know what it's supposed to mean, Dad. Stranger, you said you had a story to tell me. Well, I'm listening. Go on, talk. The Lone Ranger told of what he and Tonto had seen that afternoon. The meeting of Stockton and the two other men. Then he repeated the story Ed Thomas had told him before the posse had come upon them and before the old man had lost consciousness. It was the story of signing the paper and the hold up on the ridge. And Ed Thomas recalls everything clearly. As the buckboard started over the ledge, the man wearing the bandana yelled for Pete to jump clear. Then Pete called the man Rex and told him to shoot Thomas. Pete and Rex, they called each other by name. Gosh, Tom, it sure sounds like they were working together. But Pete Roswell and Rex Bacon were shot. How do you account for that? Only one way. They want an alibi for themselves. You'll notice their wounds are slight. Yes, but slight as their wounds are, Doc Briggs is keeping them in his place overnight. Sheriff, Ed Thomas is there, too. They want him dead. They'll kill him. No, oh, no, they won't. We got men watching him. Huh, Tom? Right. Another question, stranger. Yes. How does Stockton fit into this? That is, if there's a plot of some kind against Ed Thomas. I, I don't know, but I'll try to find out if you let me, Sheriff. I... I just thought of something. Yes, what is it? Perhaps it's a risky proposition, but we might find out the truth about Stockton and the two men. What rooms are Roswell and Ed Thomas in? Over at Doc Briggs' place? Yes. I don't know. Dad can find out? Sure I can. You want Dad to go over to Doc Briggs while you're telling your plan to me? No, no, not yet. Because he'll play an important part in this. Now, here's what I want him to do. Let Amos Stockton know that Toto and I are in jail, that Ed Thomas is in the room. Deputy Sheriff Dad Phillips went into Doc Briggs' house a short time later. When he came out again minutes after, he passed Amos Stockton, who was standing in front of the building. Hi, Stockton. Yes. Waiting for word about Ed Thomas? Yes, I am. Is he conscious yet? No, not yet. Doc Briggs says he may come to later tonight. Me, I'm all tuckered out. I gotta stay with him all night. Where did it? Where did they have him? That big room up there on the corner of the south wing. Oh, man, am I tired. 
I'll probably fall asleep when I get back in the job and be out colder than Thomas. Oh, well, we'll see you, Mr. Stockton. Yes. I'll let you know if I get any good news about all this. Hey, do that, will you? Yeah, so that's where Thomas is, eh? That big room in the corner of the south wing. Well. Amos Stockton moved with a desperation born of avarice and fear of exposure. I bet he must have fallen asleep. If he has, uh, he's alone. So, Ed Thomas, you wouldn't die when you were supposed to. Oh, now you will. Let go of me. Help. It's too late. They'll never hear you. you. Pete. Pete Roswell. It's you. My throat stopped in Pete, quiet, quiet. Where's Ed Thomas? I was told I had him in this room. This is my room. This. What'd you say? What's this about Thomas? They didn't tell you. He's still alive. He's here in this house, and he may recover. You mean it? Stockton, did he tell them about us, me and Rex? No, no, he wasn't conscious. That's why I must kill him before he recovers. Yeah, you can't let him live, Stockton. He knows Rex and I did it. He must. Rex yelled at me. I don't care about that part. I care about the will you had him sign. That's where I come in. It's where I come in, too, Stockton. I'm his partner. That will says I get the ranch property, all of it, when Thomas dies. The oil people have to pay me for it when they buy it. But the money goes to me. Now, don't worry. I'll share it as we planned. But we can't waste time here arguing. Thomas signed the will, didn't he? Sure. Uh, Else we wouldn't have killed him. Uh, Tried to kill him, I mean. The will's in my pocket. All right, I'll get it. Then I'll find out what room Thomas actually is in. I wouldn't bother if I were you, Stockton. It's the mask, man, the doorway. Use your gun, Stockton. Use your gun. Too slow, Stockton. You were a perfect target in the moonlight. All right, Sheriff. The sheriff, followed by deputies carrying lighted lanterns, came in with guns drawn. Don't move, Roswell. Stay right there in bed. Dad, put the handcuffs on him. Yep. And get that will they were talking about in Roswell's pocket. You you heard? Everything, Roswell. My arm, it's set it. Phillips, you're here. You went home. You told me. What I was told to tell you. Well, you come here and do just what you did. The masked man called it right, didn't he, Tom? He certainly did. The stranger's gone. Yeah, she he disappeared like a ghost. Must have gone over to the jailhouse to meet his Indian pal. What? You let the Indian go? Yes, as soon as we saw you sneak into this hospital, Roswell. Then we knew the masked man was right. Yeah, my, my army, he did that too. Too bad you didn't name it your heart. Uh, before you take me and Stockton away, Sheriff... We'll take Rex Bacon, too, after Doc Briggs says you may go. All right, but... But tell me anyway, who was that mask hombre? You should have guessed by now, Roswell. That was the Lone Ranger. copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.